Hi everyone, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Entity Level Factual Consistency of Abstractive Text Summarization. This is from researchers from AWS and Columbia University. So at very high level, the paper essentially introduces one of the major limitations that is faced by current neural text summarization systems, and that is entity level hallucinations. So if we see this example, people in Italy and Netherlands are more likely to consume fewer cups of coffee than those in UK, a study suggests. So this is one of the generated summary that's part of the XM test data set. Now over here, this entity UK was not at all present in the source document, but somehow model kind of generated this as a part of the summary. So this is the exact problem that this paper focuses, where it kind of tries to see if we can reduce or if we can even change the measure to reduce these kind of entity hallucinations. So yeah, that's the goal of the paper. So let's start with the abstract. But before that, if you're new to this channel and such content interests you, then consider subscribing because I do have a lot of interesting videos coming up in the future. So yeah, let's move with the abstract. So a key challenge for abstract text summarization is ensuring factual consistency of generated summary with respect to the original document. So as of now, the current state of the art models as well, for example, BART and T5 or Pegasus, even though they have very high root score and all, they still exhibit all these entity hallucinations. And one of the recent studies have shown this to be happening almost 30% of the time. Wherein the entities such as names, location, all of these things that the model generates as a part of summary were actually not present in the source document, which again is a sort of fact fabrication. So yeah, in this paper, authors propose a new metric to kind of quantify this entity level factual consistency in the generated summaries. Because Rouge essentially is not typically designed for doing that as it is just the n-gram overlap between the generated and the actual summary. So introduction of new matrix is one of the contributions of this paper. And apart from this, authors also propose two training mechanisms that try to address this issue. So let's move further and see the metric and the algorithms in detail. Okay, so talking about the entity level factual consistency matrix, so they propose three new metrics that kind of rely on existing named entity recognition models. So let this N of T and N of H be the number of entities in the target summary, which is the gold summary and the hypothesis summary, which we generate. So the intersection between both these sets will kind of denote the number of entities that we have in the generated summary that are also there present in the source document. So now there could be a case of multi-word entities, let's say name of a person or place. So in those scenarios, as long as any n-gram of the entity matches the ground truth entities, they treat this to be a hit and that will be considered as a part of intersection. So for example, if let's say Obama was something that the model generated and the ground truth had the entire word which is Barack Obama, in such scenarios, these entities would be considered as a part of intersection. But again, this has its own limitations because let's say if Obama was there in the ground truth summary and Barack Obama is something that your model generated, since there is intersection of unigrams, you'll be considering this as a part of intersection set. But generating this extra word Barack is still kind of incorrect because we don't know if the source document was talking about Barack Obama or Michelle Obama or something else. Okay. So while doing this stuff, they don't actually consider stop words and they also do all these matchings in a case insensitive manner. So yeah. So the first metric that they propose as a part of intersection is precision source. Wherein they define the degree of hallucination with this formula, which is nothing but the intersection of the entities that you generate in the summary and the source document. And then you kind of normalize by dividing by the number of entities that you have in the summary. So yeah, this way you get a percentage view of the named entities that are found in the summary as well as there in the source. So a very low value of precision of this would kind of indicate a very severe hallucination because in that case, the denominator will be very high. So the first experiment that the authors did was on three established data sets of Newsroom, CNN, Daily Mail, and XM. So they found that for all three data sets, if you consider ground truth summary and the source document, the precision percentage was somewhere around 90% for Newsroom, which means almost 10% of the data in training validation as well as in test was already hallucinated. Now, if you're going to use that data set to kind of train your model, definitely things would worsen further. And it was very severe in the case of XM. Now, as you can see these numbers, 79%, 79.5, 79.3, which means like close to 20% is the hallucination rate in the actual ground truth data set what we have. So considering these numbers, they hypothesized like because of the data set that we have is already kind of hallucinated. That could be one of the reasons that the model is also learning that pattern. Hence, they came up with a technique that they call as entity based data filtering under which the strategy is to kind of clean the data set so that we can have at least high precision for the ground truth data that we have. So for this, they apply the species NER model 
on the gold summary to identify all the named entities that I have. So if any of the entities do not actually occur in the source document, that sentence in which that extra entity occurs in the ground truth summary is kind of discarded. Now in the cases where you just have single sentence as a summary, and if that has one of the entities that is not occurring in the source document, then they entirely remove this document summary pair from the data set. So this way they kind of ensured that the data set at least what we have, which we'll be using to train our summarization models should have this entity precision value of one. Okay. So if we see this table two, so originally the data set for train validation and test had these number of examples. After doing the filtering, they reduced to almost these. So as you can see, like roughly 10% of the data is removed. Now, if you see this XM, these are the total number of documents that you have in the original data set under train validation and test split. Now, after doing the filtration, this is the number that we have, which is a lot. If you see like almost 70,000 samples were hallucinated. So definitely the model is going to learn those patterns and like it is destined to hallucinate. So it looks like this method made sense. So when they evaluated this for original and filtering, if we see these two tables, we'll see to what classification and this method is. So for XM, if we just notice the earlier precision was 93.9 and after doing the filtering, the model had the precision of 98.2, which means it was just hallucinating 2% of the times and similarly for the micro precision. So yeah, this method seems to work moving forward. Okay, so the other two metrics that they define is precision and recall with respect to target. The early one was with respect to the source document. So again, the formula goes same, which is the intersection of entities between the ground truth summary and the one that you have generated divided by the total number of entities that you have generated as a part of summary, which essentially is nothing but how many of the entities that you have generated is also a part of the ground truth summary. And similarly for recall, you divide by the number of entities in the original summary. So again, here the intuition is to find out the number of entities that are there as a part of ground truth summary, which are not there in the generated summary. So that way you get a precision recall and to get one holistic matrix, they define this F1 score. So yeah, these were the three matrix that they define. Now talking about one of the methods that they introduced to improve this entity hallucination is that they define a multitask loss, which is based on identifying summary worthy named entities in the source document. So the summary where the named entities are nothing but the entities that are there in the source document are also present in the ground truth summary. So the flow goes like this. So they use BART for training all of these things. So I do have a detailed video on BART on this channel. I'll put that in the i button. Make sure to check that out. So it's a typical sequence sequence model. Let's say this is the encoder and this is our decoder. So this is where the lexical units enter. And here you get the thought representation and then you do a language modeling objective like the previous token goes as an input to the next token. So this again is kind of derived based on teacher forcing ratio. So I think you already know how this thing works. So yeah, now I'm majorly talking about what summary worthy sentence, how this goes is. So let's say this is our source document and these red colored patches are nothing but the named entities. And let's say this is our ground truth summary. And these are the entities that the model reproduced. And let's say this is corresponding to the first two entities that we had in the source document. So originally we'll be just having one loss, which is the likelihood loss based on the decoder while it's trying to make the prediction. Let's call it as L1. Now they're trying to introduce another loss at the encoder end. Let's call it as L2. Now this L2 loss is derived based on the notion if the encoder is correctly able to predict the summary worthy entities or not. So they tag all the words in the source document with the BIO scheme, B for beginning, I for intermediate, O for others or outside. So let's say if 10 words were there in the source document, let's correspond to these 10 dashes. The first one is O because it's not a part of entity, it's a normal word. Let's say this is the entity that is supposed to be a summary worthy entity. So you give B because it's a beginning, then I because this has to be a part of this. So this way you kind of combine some compound words. And let's say this again is one of the entities, but it's not a summary worthy entity because it is not present in the ground truth summary. So you give O and O for this. So this way you kind of tag every word in the source document. And at the encoder end, you calculate this loss for every time step. So the higher the loss in this case would mean you are not able to correctly identify these special tags and hence that we'll have a high L2 loss. But we want this loss to be really less. So if this optimizes on this objective as well, the encoder representation that it learns would have weights that are more targeted to optimize on this task. And hence the representation will also have a notion of knowing what the important entities and what normal words are. Now the representation that the decoder receives is kind of weighted in that sense because it already imbibes the information about the summary worthy entities. Hence that way we assume that the representation is little rich 
and entity aware now if we use that and do this decoding the chances are we will see less hallucinations in the decoder end so yeah that's the entire idea and if we see these are the two losses the first one is nothing but the likelihood estimation so you want to maximize this xi is nothing but the input representation tokens yi less than t is let's say a tth time what the word you want to predict you want to see all the words that have it till that moment so you want to maximize this and so you have a minus term so it essentially minimizes and that's your loss so this is a typical sequence sequence loss not talking about the second one which is the bio loss which is for this named entity classification so theta is nothing but the model parameters and for the encoder if i give this token i should be able to correctly classify its bio tag so yeah this is the second loss and the multitask loss that they find is nothing but the first loss plus alpha times the second loss where alpha is the parameter it kind of control how much infusion of this named entity loss we want to have in the thought vector representation so yeah that's one of the methods that they propose the second and the last method that they talk about in this paper is called joint entity and summary generation okay so as a part of this they still consider the notion of summary worthy named entities but here the way they try to infuse this information is in this way you have an encoder you have an decoder so the earlier one talked about having an extra loss at the encoder end that will help the model to have a richer representation of the encoder but in this case what they do is they employ a typical sequence sequence architecture which is bart but instead of generating just the summary sentence they also generate these named entities and then you have a special token over here so think of the source document that goes over here let's say keywords at the decoder you not only generate the summary words but also these summary worthy named entities let's say three were there and then you have a special token followed by the entire sequence of the summary so this way at t8 time step let's say if i were to generate this word of summary due to self attention it would attend to all the words that it has produced in the past as well as these named entities so that way we assume it will make a thoughtful decision and not generate extra entities resulting in reduced hallucinations so yeah that's the idea now if we see the experiments and results so for exam we have already seen this original filtering now if you apply classification which is the named entity loss along with this filtering thing these are the numbers that we see so there is a little increase in precision over here now for precision target and recall you can see there again is a bit of a increase which means that extra loss is kind of working in our favor and we are able to learn richer representation of the encoder was the last method where they append this named entities with the special token followed by summary sentence is not surpassing any of these results is still equivalent to the earlier one but if we see the other data sets we can see like there is a improvement that's happening over the earlier methods and similarly for this one so yeah that's pretty good okay i think we are now done with the paper so yeah it was a pretty interesting read and since the paper essentially focused on just handling entity level hallucinations i found couple of papers that talk about the relations around those entities and kind of verifying those things so i'll try to go through those papers in the future videos so yeah having said that if you like such content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across with your friends to whose who is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care